What's going on today, Maureen? We're just past the first week of April and I figured it's time to do a tour of the garden. And one of the reasons why I really like doing tours is just to kind of capture the beginning of the year and then to do it throughout so that you can actually see the progress as it stands when you look at what the garden looks like right now it's pretty discouraging and I can just I'm just gonna have a little confession time with you right now I have had a real lack of motivation and typically in January I like I usually am slapping my hand going no Maureen don't plant and um, you know, we're going to go tour the greenhouse studio and usually have trays and trays and trays of plants ready to go. And this year, I I think there there might be like three right now and uh, I need to get planting uh, up the cucumbers and things like that. Some things could be up potted, so that's another thing. But anyway, you know, whatever my lack of motivation is, which I don't really quite know, I, I will say some days it's due to the uh, cooler temperatures or the rainy weather. You know, today is pretty nice. We're above the 50s uh, in Fahrenheit and which is, I think we were supposed to get up to about 14 Celsius. So it is a pretty nice day. So let's go have a look and see what's going on here or what's not really going on here. We will start up here where I have most of the potatoes planted and the grapes that are growing. And I'll just do a quick overall of the whole what I call the front yard garden bed. Um, this year, I do not have any of my straw bales. Cause uh, they're like $20 a piece. And in the past, I've either gotten them for, you know, $5 a bale or for free. And so to be buying seven of them for $20, mm -mm, that's too expensive. So this year is not gonna be straw bale gardening, no. I will be doing some squashes in the grow bags and I will, bring in my trellises and stuff with my grapes I have three grapes on this trellis if you've never planted grapes don't plant three grapes on one trellis it's not necessary mm -mm, don't do it don't do it this red one is starting to bud out a little bit but this one right here with the white it's looking really good and then sadly, my Gewurz demeanor is not looking good. So maybe I'll only end up with two grapes on this trellis. And the reason being that you don't need to have more than one grape is just because these will get absolutely huge over time. So then the grapes will just end up be being just way too big for this trellis. You know, there's just no need to it. Hello, it's me. I have planted some potatoes in here. There are some that are coming up, which is great. This other side, it does have one great big one there and a small one, but I haven't seen anything else coming up in here. So this is another place that we will be having to plant. This new arch way that I have here that we put up last year, uh, I will be again growing my cantaloupes and honeydew melon off of it. The rhubarb is already up and looking lush and gorgeous. There's three of them on the property. And then if you saw my last long form video, I was talking about having to just adapt and change because there was so much garlic that came up that was left from last year and I just let it grow. But in the spots where you don't see any green, that's where I have our potatoes. The Camilla is blooming beautifully and right beside it, kind of May tree bush, that one is going to be coming out and that's another beautifully fragrant one. So I'm looking forward to that. Lots of garlic to come up. The garlic was supposed to be planted at my garden away from home. Of course, that video also showed that with the flooding that happened at that garden, I think it took out a huge row of the garlic that we had planted. Up at the top again for this year, that's where I will be planting my watermelons. It's a nice way to let them, they can sprawl all out. More flowers blooming on this tree and a, another happy rhubarb right beside where the yellow lid is. That's going to be my new spot for my poo poo juice. This is a nut Nutka rose and it's the one that has little roses on it but they have just beautiful fragrance. Well a piece broke off and so I just stuffed it in the ground. Um, I don't know if it was even before the new year was was here and this is already starting to bud. So I'll have two really nice rose bushes right here. 
And then as we move into what I call the mid yard, we have our coffee sacks there because I am needing to order more wood chips and we're gonna cover the mound. And over here as well, under the shrubs, we've put down new coffee socks and then we will cover them with the wood chips. It will help to suppress the weeds and of course they'll break down and continue to feed the soil. My new tenant, he uh, brought his table and so he put it out front here. So they have a nice little table, kind of in this nice little park setting, which is lovely. At the front of this mound, this is my only olive tree that is in ground and it is like way bigger than the other ones. I would love to put the other ones into ground, but I'm wanting to save them for when I find the right place to have my farm. So, you know, eventually my other ones, as long as I can keep them alive, will look like that one. Uh, this was a fruit salad tree and uh, all the other, I think it had four different fruits on it. They, uh, all the fruits died off except for the plum. So it is now a plum tree. And then right beside it is that delicious peach. see all the new growth. I think this is all dead here. This is looking very dead to me, so I might have to, oh no, it does have, there's one here, so I won't be, won't be pulling those off quite yet, but we'll see if they don't last. And then if I just back up from those two fruit trees, uh, in here I also have uh, all my elderberry. There's one there, one here, one here, here. Having elderberries last year was fantastic and we also received some from a friend of mine and Marissa made some amazing elderberry syrup which <laughs> made me go okay I'm gonna propagate a whole lot more because I would like us have a lot of elderberry syrup especially through the winter season. That stuff just saved me. I had performances to do back in December and and um, got a bit of a weird sore throat. And I just took a diluted water bottle filled with it and was drinking it during my all my Christmas shows. And it was the thing that just kept me going. I'm always so proud of these benches that Marissa and I made. We didn't make the table, but the bench backs were from a bunk bed and we turned them into these benches and they're up high and they're just wonderful and I love it in this little corner. Last year I grew the loofahs out of a pot and they climbed up here. You know, I found that the loofahs did way better in the pot out here in the front as opposed to in the back against my studio um, where they were in ground. They only got, you know, about this big where the ones that were in the pots, they actually did a whole lot better. Look at this Camilla. I just wish it had fragrance. It's just so amazing. And then there's all the petal carnage that comes down. A little overview of the back garden. I need to let my, my big girls out because it is such a nice day. And there does come a time where I can't let them be out here in the garden uh, because they tear it all up. So I will be going and letting them out. You know, that's been my focus since we've gotten, since we got the new babies uh, in the middle of March. You know, that has been, you know, my sole focus. You know, this first garden bed here, I really struggle with it trying to get something to grow. I've tried herbs, I've tried the strawberries. This year I am gonna put some onions in here, maybe a pepper or two. Oh yeah, I've also grown peppers as well. Oh, that beautiful white one in the back there. That is called uh, bridal wreath. But right in front here is the Solomon seal. And I just love them. It's such a pretty, pretty plant but I think the big girls probably hear me, so I better go let them out. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, there's Dottie. Oh, yes, you can all come out. The extra gate is in your way. Sorry about that. You can get by it. Oh, yeah, a little hop. There we go. Hmm. Only two eggs today. I'm propagating plants from the yard. These are all raspberry suckers that I dug up out of the garden. Um, this big one, the, that one is from last year, so it'll be a two-year-old, as is this very, very tall one. But these all, I just did them the other day. You know, some of them doesn't look like they've all taken, 
rather than just throwing them out, digging them up and throwing them into my compost, I just figured it is a nice way for me to make a little bit of extra money and, and also to help supply people with their own raspberries. Garden bed number one, you know, I probably will again put the broccoli in, but we'll put it on, on this side and, uh, you know, put beans again to climb up that arbor. What, uh, you know, the other things, I'm not sure. You know, you are supposed to kind of have a plan and a list and uh, I'm just kind of winging it this year. Mm, I actually wing it most years. <laughs> this is a three-tiered garden. I, I removed some of the, the coffee sacks off the back because the girls like to go up in there. But this is where I do my tomatoes with my roller hooks and they hook up on the top there. But down here I have planted some more Swiss chard and some radishes, but I cover it over just for right now while the girls are at large because they'll just eat it. Right, Dottie? <laughs> so I'm gonna have a little peek. Oh yeah, not you. Okay, so nothing's up yet. No, no, you don't need to go in there, Dottie. It's okay, thanks. <laughs> Looks like I've got some more, I've got some more raspberry suckers to dig up. I've got this columnar apple tree. It's full of blossoms. We didn't get any apples from it last year. And this is a different variety right here. Um, this one does have again some blossoms. They're just not as far as this, as this other one. I do have in pots again, some thornless blackberries. I think there's one there one here and I am gonna just work it you know with some welded wire and just kind of make columns for them to grow in for now um, this is a, a cherry bush I also have some elderberry trees there uh, I think there is another one in there somewhere um, right beside it is a fig I think that is a propagated fig I think this fig here is one that I bought again in a pot for me to take with me to my farm but this little area here is where I bring out my little portable greenhouse to bring the plants out and then I turn it into what I call as my orchard. This is garden bed number two. Um, this was my winter garden. Uh, I didn't tend to it. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I know we looked at it a few months ago and there was some things, but I think most things have gotten eaten and I just need to take the remé cloth off of it. Right. this is going to be <laughs> you're going to see it live and in person oh well oh, there is some things in here nice okay so I think there is some of the cabbages looks like there still might be a little bit of kale I think I'm gonna have to go through and do some cleanup in here back here I will plant my pickling cubes because they will have this wire to crawl up on more rhubarb all coming out which are again by the Solomon seal and then uh, this fig tree that I've had planted here uh, after my husband passed away so this is kind of his corner you know, the S is for his last name and a little gnome looks like him when his hair all went white we have I have this espalier apple tree uh, I do believe we did get some apples off of it last year I was able to protect them and not have the rats eat them all and then this is our garden bed number three. Uh, in here, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna plant. I am motivated to grow, but it's just, um, I just kind of feel discombobulated on um, what I should be doing or where the time is. Like I'm just shocked like that we're in month four of this year. And it's like, I cannot believe it. I always have to show off the Daphne because as I'm standing here and because it's warm, the fragrance is just so beautiful. It's it's like rose, lily of the valley, and another lovely fragrance, and it just blows throughout the yard. Just so wonderful. Oh, you got quite the hole there digging. That's great. I'm glad you're getting a good hole, Doug. Oh, and there's Miss Lulu taking a bath in the strawberry patch. So this is where I have my asparagus and strawberries. I have, um, they're just walking across them. So these are little alpine or pineapple strawberries that I 
took from suckers last year and yeah, there's one that's already flowering. And these again are things that I'm gonna put out to sell. Oh, they just came in there and told you you can't have a bath in there? Is that what happened? So now you're out? Looks like she, uh, <laughs> looks like she got to go back in there. In the strawberry asparagus patch, I'm hoping to get some alpine strawberries. They uh, end up, they're, they're uh, end up being a very, very big strawberry. And there was a farm, um, Sipa farm here on the island, and they were growing their strawberries well into the summer. And so I'm hoping to get some plants from them so that I can plant them in there. You know, I just am, like I said, I'm finding it difficult to, to stay motivated. And so, you know, some of you other farmers and gardeners, like, do you get to that place where you're just like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I forgot to disarm the snap traps. Eh, now that the girls are out. Oof. Nice to see the oriental lily has come up. And we've got our cat mint and more of those alpine or pineapple strawberries and the yarrow. It's so wonderful when you get to see all this greenery up when not much else is growing. Nice to see some of my herbs have come back. We've got our oregano, and I do believe this is our sage. That's the lemon balm, which just takes over everything. And then I did try to uh, propagate some strawberries from last year's suckers. Um, I think I need to do some cleaning up. They don't, they don't necessarily look the best, but again, it was strawberries to sell. Oh, and I should show you, um, we did get a cabinet that we have to do a little work to that I could use as my little front yard farm stand. I'm not sure if I can totally unwrap it. So this might not make it into the video. Oh yeah, I've tucked it, we've tucked it underneath and it's, yeah, it's tucked in, in the back. So that'll be for another day for you to see, or I could just, you know, delete this whole section. But let's go look in the greenhouse. Uh, this is a tea plant for making tea. Uh, one of these is a salmon berry. I think there's a blueberry here and another type of berry, but I forget what it is. And then my little blueberry patch on the stairs here, as well as my two roses up there. Nice to see them leafing out. This, this particular rose comes from my mom's house, which it's the type of rose that I grew up with. Again, they're just beautiful and fragrant. Oh dear. Ooh, it's a bit warm in here. So I've got one of the pepper plants uh, survived me. This one is um, wanting to die. He is covered in gnats. I'm still dealing with those. You know, it's not as bad. The Terra, and then this is my avocado. That pepper plant just recently died. And of course my beautiful cardamom. He's just gorgeous. And then these are the lemon trees that I propagated. You know, they're getting up there for height. And I think the lime, it looks like it's starting to flower. Calamunda orange, it's ready to go. There is a little Meyer lemon there. And then we do have a few little plants that are waving in the wind here. Mimosa pudica. That is something that's new to me. It's some sort of herb, I forget what it's good for. Uh, this is some anise, uh, some basil with a tomato hanging on it. These are many of the squashes that I just recently planted, but it doesn't look like we have anything yet. Usually I'll have, you know, about three of these trays already going at this point. So the romaine lettuce and the Tom Thumb lettuce, that could actually be potted up. The onions there in the back, they all need a little bit of a haircut, but I do need to give everybody a bit of a drink of water. These are just kind of boot trays that you would have at your front door. And this year I'm working at trying to uh, water from the bottom up as opposed to going on top, wetting the soil just to help combat the gnats in here. Put the sticky tape out, I use the neem oil. They just seem to still be living in here. I do come and give them all a bit of a spray. It just seems to attack the peppers mostly. You know, the avocado, it's, it's fine. Cardamom is fine. 
Um, doesn't seem to affect the lemons either, that they're not in the soil, so I do spray the soils. Oh yeah, this is my sweet potato from last year. I dug up the potatoes and the potato looked fine, so I stuck it into ground and sure enough, I got a slip from it, so at least I have one slip going on. Another look from the other side of the gardens here. The three tiered, and then, you know, way up on the other side of the raspberry bush, that's where the asparagus and the strawberries are. You know, it is looking very green and lush, but you know, in a couple of months, it will look even more amazing. Anyway, I sure hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care and God bless.